North Korea's charcoal car, world's most unique new energy vehicle, a truck approached at a leisurely pace, its engine shutting off as it came to a stop by the roadside. Passengers on the truck bed disembarked and waited by the road. Suddenly, the driver jumped down from the cabin and climbed onto the truck bed. Instead of refueling, he poured a bag of wood into a furnace on the truck bed. After a while, billowing smoke rose, and the truck seemed to transform into a steam-powered locomotive as the engine roared back to life. Within a few minutes, the vehicle slowly continued forward and disappeared from sight. This scene of a smoke-filled charcoal truck with passengers waiting by the roadside for its steampunk-style activation is not a scene from a science fiction novel but a common sight on North Korean roads. This unique new energy vehicle is known as the popular charcoal car in North Korea. North Korea is possibly the only country in the world today that extensively uses charcoal cars. The reason for adopting this synthetic fuel is not due to technological advancement or environmental concerns, but rather out of necessity, a lack of oil. North Korea suffers from an extreme energy shortage, particularly in fossil fuels. Except for military units and a privileged few, ordinary people find it difficult to afford gasoline. In addition to scarce domestic resources, Economic sanctions have further exacerbated North Korea's situation. Since the early 1990s, the collapse of the Soviet Union and the Eastern Bloc has led North Korea to undergo a dramatic shift from a period of golden development to one of marching through hardship. During this time, North Korea's foreign trade suffered greatly, international aid declined sharply, and the military first politics rapidly depleted the nation's wealth hindering the development of other industries and agriculture. North Korea's own economic structure became severely imbalanced. Additionally, natural disasters and international sanctions further worsened the overall development of the country. In such a context, North Korea had to find ways to ensure the supply of energy and resources, utilizing scarce fossil fuels for essential purposes. It was under these circumstances that North Korea came up with the idea of charcoal cars. Unlike modern cars that use internal combustion engines, charcoal cars rely on a device called a wood gasifier to provide power. This is actually a rather ancient technology. With the first wood gasifier being built by Gustav Bischoff in 1839, while the world's first internal combustion engine wasn't invented until 1876, principle behind early wood gasification engines was simple. Wood charcoal or firewood would be burned in a specially designed furnace in a low-oxygen environment, resulting in the production of hydrogen and carbon monoxide. These gases would then be cooled and directed into the car's engine, where they would be burned as fuel to drive the engine. This technology was widely used during specific periods of time. During World War II, due to the blockade and energy scarcity, many European countries extensively used charcoal cars. In Germany alone, approximately 500,000 charcoal cars were in use until the end of the war. Even the famous Volkswagen Beetle was equipped with a large wood gas generator to power its movement making it one of the national devices in Germany during World War II. Additionally, politically neutral countries like Sweden and Finland also adopted this technology extensively to reduce their reliance on international trade. Wood gas is cheap, economical, and eliminates your dependence on gasoline, crude oil, and petroleum, proclaimed a propaganda advertisement by Nazi Germany during World War II. As the German propaganda stated at the time, oil comes from abroad, but this is the fuel of our homeland. For North Korea, facing a similar international situation, charcoal cars serve as the perfect embodiment of homeland vehicles. Charcoal drives the livelihood of the North Korean people, while charcoal cars have the advantage of easily accessible energy, their drawbacks are evident as well. They require frequent maintenance, 
are prone to stalling and drivers need to periodically tend to the furnace. It is not uncommon for drivers to have to add fuel while driving. Moreover, specific wood requirements must be met, as random roadside wood or branches cannot be used without proper gasification, which requires the wood to have less than 20% moisture content. The biggest drawback is their limited power, with a top speed of around 30 km per hour, making driving a charcoal car a challenging task. It's not an easy journey, and one is likely to end up covered in soot and dirt. In North Korea, only ordinary people choose charcoal cars for their daily life and production needs, crowded than smoky, driving or riding in a charcoal car is not an easy task. Despite the slow speed and less than ideal experience, charcoal cars remain a cheap and accessible mode of transportation for the North Korean people who cannot afford high fuel prices. Most charcoal cars in North Korea are trucks that serve both as cargo carriers and passenger vehicles. Passengers sit in the cargo bed and assist the driver in tending to the furnace and collecting fuel. Approximately every 20 kilometers, the driver needs to remove the ashes and add more charcoal to ensure the continuous operation of the vehicle. It is said that when North Korean truck drivers are learning to drive as apprentices, half of their time is spent tending to the furnace, serving as unpaid labor. In addition to trucks widely used in rural areas, charcoal-powered cars are also used in urban areas, specifically in specialized cargo vehicles that serve the public. Due to the cheaper cost of charcoal compared to gasoline, it is more cost-effective to use charcoal in the public transportation system. Some people even register their vehicles as transportation businesses to make money. When it comes to vehicle selection, the domestically produced Sungri 58, Victory 58, is commonly chosen, while Heibangho, Liberation, vehicles imported from China are also popular due to their durability. Although charcoal cars are slow and dirty, they have an unexpected advantage. While regular cars can be fined by the police, charcoal cars are not constrained by traffic regulations. Even if they are stopped by traffic officers, these vehicles emitting thick smoke are often quickly allowed to pass without being impounded. This can be considered an unintended advantage of these smoke-belching cars, furthermore, Many charcoal cars belong to the North Korean military, and the privileges enjoyed by the military often ensure smooth passage for these vehicles. Military units stationed in mountainous or rural areas can freely cut down trees for fuel without the supervision of the Forest Protection Bureau, allowing them to save money on fuel expenses. Charcoal cars belonging to the military create a barrier of white smoke. This sight of smoke billowing into the sky undoubtedly surprises those who see a charcoal car for the first time. There have even been instances where, when charcoal cars were driving along the Yalu River border, some Chinese people mistook the thick smoke in the distance as a sign of car trouble and shouted to the drivers, the car is on fire, North Korean people. Of course, charcoal cars are not a long-term solution or a true new energy source. They are a reflection of North Korea's energy scarcity, which is one of the important factors hindering the country's industrial and economic development. With international sanctions and rising oil prices, the cost of wood also increases along with gasoline and diesel prices. Some drivers even use corn cobs coated with waste oil to power their trucks because corn cobs and waste oil are cheaper than wood. In the visible future, Clean and abundant energy remains an unattainable dream for the North Korean people, and the noisy charcoal cars will continue to emit smoke on the roads of North Korea. Run on, charcoal cars!